that window. Now, here are some opportunities that you may get as a good result of communication. You may get breakaways or fast breaks. You may get entry passes in front of the goal or in front of the rim. Back door passes. Ball switches to an open side of the field. You may get defensive steals. Defensive traps resulting in turnovers and, and there's many, many other different opportunities that may come up as a result of having good communication. In addition to taking advantage of windows of opportunity, good communication allows you to make constant adjustments during the course of the game. So the third question is, how can I develop good communication? Well, there's a few basic things you can do to develop good communication on your team. First, teach your players the common terms for your sport and what they mean. You know, soccer's got some very specific ones. Uh, square means pass directly to the sideline. Negative is a passing the ball back towards your own goal. Through ball, pass the ball on the ground, pass the, the defense, etc. Now, again, in our report section, we've got all these common terminologies for this broken down by sport, so you can download and, and grab those reports uh, and pass those out, print them out, and pass them out to your teammates and, or to your, uh, your team. Second thing to develop good communication, insist that your players use these common terms when practicing or playing. And third, reward those who communicate with a verbal affirmation and encouragement. So when you hear your team, you hear your players, you hear your teammates talking and, and being very specific and using these kinds of terms, let them know it. Let them know they do a good job. Point it out. Uh, that will reinforce that in their minds. Now here are a few points of emphasis for teaching good communication skills. First, use a tone of voice that's appropriate for the situation. Use urgency for urgent situations. Use calm tone to slow down the game, etc. You can, I've, I've often during these times when a window of uh, opportunity is open on the court, if you say, through ball now, that urgent sound in my voice is what makes them think, oh, it has to happen, you know. And by, if I want to instill somebody who's getting a little carried away, he's, he's getting a little bit out of control, I'll say, all right, now, slow it down a little bit, let's relax, and I'll use my tone of voice to kind of slow things down. Second point of emphasis is using a command voice. When you sound like an authority, you, people take action. Uh, when something needs to happen right now, use a forceful sounding voice to demand obedience to your command. Your teammates will instinctually obey because you sound like you're a coach or an authority figure. Uh, it's, it's really funny when this happens. Uh, you don't want to put yourself above somebody else and talk down to them, but in a game situation when windows of opportunity are closing and opening and closing very fast, this is very, very effective using that command voice. Third, be very specific. Use your terminology. Fourth, be very clear. Enunciate. Make sure your teammates clearly hear what you're saying. Don't mumble or jumble your words. And fifth, volume. Adjust your volume depending on who you want to hear you. If you're close to one of your teammates and you don't want everybody to know what you're doing, you're about to discuss a, uh, a little strategy or a little something you want to happen real quick, or maybe you're telling him about an opening on the other side of the field that he can turn and pass the ball to, then you're not going to want to scream it out. But if you're trying to communicate to the defense and you're all the way up on the offense, you want to make sure you use your volume so that everybody can hear you. Now here are some techniques to teach your players on how to use nonverbal communication effectively. First off, uh, you know, in, in basketball, every sport has their, their communication, both verbal and nonverbal. But, for example, in basketball, an open hand may mean pass the ball right here to my hand. A closed fist over my head may communicate, I'm setting a pick for you. If I'm pointing to the area of the floor, I may be indicating, hey, either dribble there or I'm going to be there in a second, pass it right there, I'm going to break and, and be open in that. And then head nods, left or right, those types of things give are, are, are ways to communicate. So here's some techniques you can use to teach your players how to be non, how to Communicate effectively using nonverbal techniques. Number one, establish eye contact. Number two, indicate who's doing what. So you may point to yourself and then point to what you're going to do, or point to them and then point where you want them to go. Uh, but indicate who's doing what. Another thing, a third thing, is a head nod in the direction of the movement. So you quick head jolt, you make that eye contact, head jolt, kind of go to the left, go to the right. Uh, number four, an open hand means pass here to this spot. Uh, and again, pointing to an area on the floor where you want to receive the ball. These are, these are great things that you can use for non-verbally communicate with your team. Now, communication, again, is essential for every team. As info gets transferred quickly and clearly, better decisions can be made by everybody on the team. So make sure you use both verbal and non-verbal uh, com communication methods. Get everybody on the same page by giving their, our communication report, our uh, sports terminology reports, which list the common terms for your sport, 
and require all players to use those terms in their game communication. All of us can improve our communication. Keep working on these different elements of communication and you'll quickly be on your way to becoming a champion. Again, this is Lyndon with MindofAChampionSports.com. We'll see you again soon.